Hello, I'm Gino Fransman. Um, I'm from the Open Education Influences Project here at Nelson Mandela University, which is located in South Africa. I've been involved in open education for about 20 years. I'm passionate about it. I'm a member of the Global Open Graduate Network, which is called Goji in for short. And I'm the hub coordinator for the Open Education for Better World International Global Mentorship Program. To me, the importance of open education is in the very name. Either it's open and people can access and engage with it, or it's closed in one way or another. This means that there are implicit and sometimes explicit limitations regarding access, sharing to cost and engagement potential. Open is open. There are many organizations supporting open education. There have been many, and actually there are so many more these days. And likewise, so many more initiatives that try and increase the relevance of free access by funding them and providing other support structures to these organizations or initiatives. Open enables free access, but it's more important to recognize that opening up isn't necessarily free. Simply, People and projects like these do need to be financially supported, as in any other endeavor. My thoughts about mainstreaming open education in general, firstly, is to make it relevant to the sectors where open is being engaged with. Then at local level, for example, um, for individuals maybe, it may be good to associate open with more than just education. For example, making open part of career or professional development could go a long way to bringing the potential of open closer to individuals and the organizations they want to already do work for or with. Nationally, perhaps associating open with indigenous groups, marginalized groups, um, or languages other than English may perhaps um, just help spread the word and reach of open. Open government partnerships exist in several countries, OGP for short, um, and they should be steering more policy development nationally and collaborating on policy development initiatives internationally. Again, these are governments. These are the things that we expect from them. So policy is a, is a clear strategic imperative to help us to harness the power and potential of open. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are a fantastic way to push open into the international space. So I encourage you to look at projects like Open Education for a Better World or OE for BW, o Open Ed Global's Open for Anti-Racism initiative that's taking off so wonderfully now, and other initiatives like these that embrace globally relevant themes where Open can make a difference. For me to this day, and perhaps this is a provocation, but for me to this day, there's a performativity of us marginalized groups being helped inside of education. And likewise, now via open education, there's a stigma sometimes, you know, like we're taking, we're taking, we're taking. It's not pervasive or common or even known of, in most cases, open education. In Africa, we likewise, we are perceived as just poor and unable to achieve things like opening up. Maybe because there are so many barriers to our access, we need to reduce playing into that trope to get support to enable better access. Maybe if we actively and more importantly, reduce the stereotype of being the takers and increase opportunities to provide the giving, we are fully able to participate in, in the international education sector. Maybe, I believe, open education is one route to getting us all closer to that place. From my side, I have a question to the Knowledge Equity Network, or Ken. How has Ken supported, or is Ken supporting or enabling policy development 
in the open education environment? Is there a strategic path to helping to get knowledge equity into practice?